the right thing. Do the right thing. Okay? That's the title. Do the right thing. So, so, so turn to your neighbor. Neighbor, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Stop, doing the thing. Stop doing the wrong thing. You don't get from God the way you should because you're doing the wrong thing. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Say, neighbor, if you don't do the right thing, I leave you. I let you be. Good luck. See, the people of the world, they have luck. I don't, hey, I don't have luck, I have favor. Amen, favor. Amen. If I tell you good luck, yeah, good luck with that. But if I say, hey, the favor of God be upon you, hey, nothing will go wrong in your life. Amen. You don't have to do like they do out there to, to taste salt and, and, and <laughs> I rebuke that devil. The name of Jesus. Right. Do the right thing. So when we read the Bible, we do the right thing. Well, what is the right thing to do when you read the Bible? Huh? Well, before that, what mama is doing, you stand. Amen. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, this is good today. I'm going to make a short, sweet, and to the point. Do the right thing. Now we are in Ezekiel chapter 33. Praise the Lord. And we're going to take it. Hey, from number 7. Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel 33, number 7. You're going to love this one. And we could read the Bible, pray for people, and go home, and God will speak to you. Because this is not a book. This is a person speaking to you. In the name of the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The people like I say, Amen. God bless you, you, six of you. And the people like I say, Amen. Ah, come on, show me some life signs. Amen. Number seven. Hey. I want you to do this. When I read the when I read the Bible, I don't I don't do Israel, I don't do Jacob, I don't do this. No, I do. I put my name. I put my name. Because God's speaking to me. Amen. So put your name on it. So you, what's your name? Whatever your name is. Hey, so you, son of man, I have made you a what? A watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear the word from my mouth and word them for me. God is not going to, hey, come down and, 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 and people are going to, they're not going to have an epiphany. God uses people. God uses people. Huh? So people want to see an angel. I want to see an angel. You die a hundred years, never see an angel. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to them a million times. Because God uses people. Say, God, use me. Amen. 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 Now, when I say to the wicked, Oh, wicked man, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn, to warn the wicked from his ways, that the, that the wicked man shall, shall die in this iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked and turn from his, and the wicked turn from his ways, and he does not turn from his ways, and he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Say, I want to deliver my soul. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord, if your transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them. How can we then live? In other words, if you behave bad, how can you live? 
God will not reward you for bad behavior. Amen. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I had no pleasure. Oh, look, look. I had not. I had no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that he, he, but that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Oh why should you die? The Bible says, I have, I have placed before you Life and death. And even the Lord goes even further for those dumb people that don't know what to choose. And the Lord said, choose life. Because God knows their people who, huh? They don't get it. Huh? They are dumb people, for real. God has placed before them life and death. And the Lord himself telling you, choose life. If God telling me choose life, why, why, why should I choose death? If God telling me choose life. So today you choose life. Do the right thing. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you. Father, you, you're here, you, you, you brought these people here to deliver them. To help them. Father, I thank you for that. But now let this word go in their heart. In our hearts, in our spirits. Father, and, and, and we're going to allow the word of God to transform our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Hey, I, I posed a, a question. I posed a question last Friday and people, some people got upset. Some people got blessed. I went home and slept like a baby. <laughs> hey, one of the things about your pastor, I am not afraid to hurt your feelings. Amen. We're too touchy. The church has become too touchy. God is not afraid to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Amen. God is not afraid. Actually, the Bible says he'll, he'll break you and make you again. And everybody go like, ah, yeah, break me. Lord, you don't know what that means. <laughs> if you know what that means, you say, Lord, break me slowly. <laughs> I put some, some an, 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 anesthetic in me. A, a spiritual anesthetic. I, I, I posed a question and I said to the people, hey, one, one of the things that I know. See, a lot of things I don't know. But one of the things that I know, that I know. Is that Satan cannot make you do anything. That's one thing you, you should get it down pack, right? The enemy could only suggest to your ear. Amen. The enemy could also create the right atmosphere for you to fall. Amen. But the enemy cannot make you fall. Because the enemy cannot overwrite our will, our freedom to choose. Amen? Amen? See, God could do whatever he wants, but he chooses not to interfere with your free will. Because if the Lord, if the Lord steals a soul that belongs to Satan and takes it to heaven, then Satan has the right to tell God, you're a thief just like me because you took something that is not yours. He belongs to me. That's why we must come through, through the door that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And we have to be obedient to his word. Say obedience. obedience. It is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The Bible says, praise the Lord, that anybody who loves me, huh, obey my commandments. If you say that you love God and you disobey the word of God, then... You don't really love God. Praise the Lord. So, in fact, I posed a question last week, and I'm going to do it again. Is, I'm not going to ask you like I did last time. 
I said, when you fell into a sin, whether whatever it is, drinking, smoking, adultery, fornication, yada, yada, name it. Just to name a few. Did you enjoy it? Huh? It tastes sweet, right? Did the enemy make you do it? No. Because if somebody's making me do something because I know I'm doing it by force, I'm not enjoying that, that, that thing or that person is, is, is forcing me to do. But something that I enjoy is by choice. Amen? So let's be realistic and clear about this. People fall into sin, not because the devil made me do it. Yeah, he created the atmosphere, of course. But our flesh enjoy what? The moment. Then later it pays a high, high, high price for that, right? Amen? So the Bible says when Jesus was praying in, 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 the, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was uh, handed over to the soldiers, he went three times to wake the disciples up, right? To help him pray. And the last time he went, he go like, you know what? <laughs> go to sleep. You sleep some more. Go. But then he said, watch and pray. So you will not fall in what? Temptation. Amen. Because God do not tempt anybody. Amen. But the Lord will give you the way out. Into that temptation. The enemy cannot make you do anything. But there are some people. Say some people. Some people. That when they get delivered from the spirit. Or whatever that is. Okay. From that spirit. They deal with a life of habit. Okay. For example. One of the strongest demonic. Uh. Weak spirit to break is nicotine. Nicotine, cigarettes. Because if God delivers you from that, right, from the spirit. But now you have to fight what? The habit. The habit. And that's the real spiritual warfare. Amen. 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 Pastor, what are you going with this? That God is telling you that you got to do the right thing. Amen. You have to do the right thing. When it comes to sin, you have to do the right thing. Amen. Because I'm going to explain it to you in a way that, that, that you probably um, will understand it better. Every time you pass that exit. There is a point of no return. Okay? There is a point of no return. In when you open a door to sin. Amen? We, we talked about it. I think it was Sunday. Remember? Uh, maybe Sunday. We talked about Cain. Or maybe last Friday. I don't know when. We talked about Cain. That God gave it a prophetic word to Cain in the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Cain, hey, Cain. If you do the right thing, just like Ezekiel is saying, if you do the right thing, then good things will, will, will follow you. But you did the wrong thing. See, at that point, Cain, Cain had hope. All he had to do is do the right thing. All he had to do is repent. But then the Lord turns and says to him prophetically, hey, hey, the sin is at the door of your life. Meaning, you have not committed murder yet. You still have time. Huh? You still have time. Amen. Sin is at the door on the other side. In other words, do not open that door. Same thing that Ezekiel is saying. We are watchmen on the wall. Right? I had to watch for your soul, but I had to watch for my soul. So if we see a potential danger for your life, I have to warn you. 
I have to tell you, stop. Stop. If I see, if you today you're seeking God, uh, and then I see you a week from now, I see you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bar drinking, drinking. I have, you know what's my job? To go and say, what, what are you doing here? What, what's wrong with you? Come on. Get out of here. Come on. Let's go. Now, if you tell me, hey, mind your own business, pastor, then I'll, I'll back away. But your blood will not follow me. Because I warn you. See, warning you is not just preaching you. Warning you is to snatch you out of danger. To snatch you out. Amen. Amen. It's not about getting into your business. Hey, that's your business. But if I see you doing something, or you see me doing something. If you see me doing something that I shouldn't be doing. if If you don't come and approach me, hey, my blood will fall upon you. Because you did not warn me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. At that point, Cain had a chance to make it right. But he decided to do what? Open the door. And when you open the door to Satan, say, when I open the door to the enemy, I have to pay a penalty. God forgive me. Yeah, God forgive me. Forgiveness has nothing to do with consequences. Amen. Huh? Forgiveness has nothing to do with consequences. Huh? But people say, hey, pastor, everything is the same. Yeah, everything is the same in a sense. Okay? Everything is the same. But, but let's say... Eh, 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 Let's say um, a, 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 a husband, a husband a, 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 tell his wife, hey, uh, I'll be back. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play ball with the, with the guys, right? And then the husband, what he does is he's, he goes, he goes to, 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 you know. And the wife passed by and said, you know, playing ball, what, what are you doing drinking? And the husband said, I'm sorry, baby, I'll, I'll never do it again. You know how it is, right? Let me tell you something about men. Men, 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 they have a, a, a gift of, com, of convincing gift uh-huh. from Satan. Yes. Mm-hmm. They know how to talk. Mm-hmm. We know how to talk. And we, we'll, we'll put you like this. <sighs> In a trance. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now, it's true. See, women have other... Gifts. <laughs> but if you, if the husband tells the wife, hey, look, I'm sorry. Or maybe you came late for, from work and you were playing ball. Hey, it's 9 o'clock. What? No, I, my car broke down. And then you, the wife find out. The wife find out that you, you, you were playing ball. Then you, you, you repent, right? You say, hey, mama, I'm sorry. I know that I was playing ball with the guys. You don't let me go anyways. <laughs> yeah, because some women had the spirit of Jezebel. The spirit, you know what the spirit of Jezebel, right? Controlling. controlling. <laughs> she go controlling. Hey, you're a good student. Look. And that spirit operating in men too, okay? But then you, you tell your husband, whatever, say, okay, Papa, don't, don't lie to me no more, okay? You kiss, you eat dinner and go, go to bed, right? He, he lied to you, right? It's a sin, right? Now, let me give you this scenario. Hey, Mama, I came late from work because I was with another woman. We went here. We, we had a good, uh, a good time. Ah, da, 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 da. Baby, I'm, I'm sorry, Mama. Ah, the devil made me do it. See, adultery is a sin who sent you to hell. Lying is a sin that sent you to hell. But the consequence is not the same. Because now I have to go, go get a lawyer, get divorced, divide the assets, go through a painful uh, child custody. Yeah, read. Oh, sorry, what? Those are the consequences of sin. So even though for God, for eternity, sin is sin, but for us right here, it, uh, the consequences are greater in some sense than another. That's right. Amen. But sin is sin, yes. right? But the consequences is not the same. 
I, 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 been going, I, I, I was going to Orlando for almost 20 years to go to work, to Orlando. And I always take the, take the turnpike and get off on, on, on exit, uh, the, the airport exit, right? The airport exit. What is it, 258? 254, something like that? You know, OBT and, and, and the airport. And I will get off there for, for, for how long? Almost 20 years. Amen? But one day, I was thinking about I don't know what. You know what I did? I passed my exit. No, to just a long ride, five miles, out of my way, get up on Osceola Parkway, pay a dollar, get out, a dollar to come in so I could. Hey, I had to pay a penalty because I was distracted. Cost me three, four, four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> you know why? Because I passed my exit. And the Lord is telling you today, do the right thing when it comes to temptation, when it comes to sin, do not pass your exit. Amen. Amen. Do not pass your exit because if you pass your exit, now you have to pay a penalty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is that, is that, does that make sense to you? So is, God is telling Israel... And he's telling the men of God, hey, you are the watchman on the wall. In other words, watch these people. Ezekiel didn't want to what? Prophesy. Going against these people is not easy. But the Lord says, you tell them that I say. Why? Because I am speaking through you. You are my voice. So you are a prophetic voice in your house. You are a prophetic voice in your job. Amen. And you are a prophetic voice wherever you set Amen. foot. Because you are God's prophetic voice. Amen. 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 Then sometimes God tells you to speak. And what do you do? You shut up. And sometimes the Holy Spirit says shut up. And you do what? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And God is telling people today, as he did then, speaking to America today. America, if you do the right thing, and you turn away from your wicked ways, oh, believe me, wicked ways. Amen. Huh? And you come back to me, the fountain of life. Because America, I don't want you to die. God don't want, God don't want the, the demise of the wicked. God don't want to destroy the wicked. But if the wicked continue in his wickedness, guess what? You're going to die. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. That's a mathematical equation. You can change it. The wages of sin. The wages of sin. I don't care in what language you put it. The wages of sin is death. So that's why God says to you, I place before you life and death. Choose life. But see, the problem with people is that people, they love more darkness than light. And that's where enjoying your sin comes to play. Amen. That's why Israel fell into disobedience three times. Did they have to pay a penalty? Right? They pay one in Egypt, in Babylon, and in, in, in Jerusalem when it was destroyed 70 years after Jesus was crucified. Amen. Every time they sin against God, they had to pay a penalty. It's not that God is, 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 is mad at you. He forgives you. He forgives you. Amen. He forgives you. But then you have to what? Deal with the consequences. 
See, this is the problem with people. Lord, I, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you, Father. I'm coming to you. I want to serve you. I want to serve you if you do this for me. If you do that for me. <laughs> Amen. If you do this. If you do that. The last person who tried to uh, negotiate with God. <laughs> ah, didn't go well. Amen. Didn't go well. Now let me tell you a secret of the Bible. Let me to show you a secret. Do you guys like secrets? Ah, you like it, right? Huh? Huh? You like it? Okay, she likes it. Abraham walked by faith. True or not true? He walked by faith. That's why he was called the father of faith. Okay? The father of faith. Amen? Because Abraham believed God without seeing anything. He just believed it. He didn't have an ounce of doubt that God could do it. Even in the promise of a, of a child and even when he had to sacrifice the child, right? He was in faith. The reason why we had to cancel generational curses because people don't understand Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you understand Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're going to realize that if you're not careful, every generation will get worse if you don't break it. How many theologians in the house? Theologians. Abraham walked by faith. And he was called a, the, a friend of God. And we have the promise of Abraham. Because we are spiritual children of Abraham. Don't let nobody tell you all the way. But then Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac, he was a good boy. But he didn't walk by faith. Huh? He didn't walk by faith. Isaac walked by sight. Because when the son came to deceive him, remember? Huh? That he was blind. He couldn't perceive. Because the enemy totally created the right, the right atmosphere. Even though God had an pur ultimate purpose, then Isa says, my son. He was kind of iffy, you know? I wonder, I wonder who that is. My son. Come so I could feel you. There's some people who walk by feelings. Amen. Abraham walked by faith. But when it times for a big test, Isaac walked by feeling. And feelings in you and you and you and me will always deceive you. Because the heart is deceitful more than all things. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Fa Daddy works by faith. Son walk by what? Let me feel you. Hmm? Hmm? Because see, they were working and they were living, even though he was the father of faith and Abraham loved God and God was his friend. But what was uh Sarah's problem. Huh? Barrenness, right? What was uh, Rebecca's problem? Huh? What was Rachel's problem? Ah, uh, you should be jumping from joy. There was a generational curse that needed to be broken. Ah, uh, you don't know this, right? There was a gen even in the even in the people of God, there was a generation of what? Because barrenness is not from God. Amen. Although God used it for his glory. Amen. But then it gets worse with, with the grandchild. Because the grandchild is not walking by faith. 
and he's not walking by feelings. Because when he got encountered God in the mountain, that he had that dream, right? Angels go up and angels go down. He got out, right? He got out. And he said, this place is terrible. Yeah, he heard about grandpa. He heard about daddy. Daddy taught him well. But check this out. He said, this place is terrible. This is the, the house of God and the door of heaven. Huh? He had an experience with the Almighty. And you know what he did? If you give me, <laughs> if you give me this, and if you give me blessings, and if you give me wealth, and if you bring me back to my brother in peace, then I will serve you. He wasn't walking by faith. He wasn't walking by feeling. He was walking in the flesh. Because the flesh is the only one who wants to bargain with God. Ah, I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you that in the church, we, you have three kinds of people. Some walking by faith, some walking by feelings, and some walking in the flesh. And who are the people who got in trouble? The people who walk in the flesh. Who do we have to warn of that? People walking in the flesh. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Why Israel fell? He, they walk in the flesh. Amen. Because the flesh is attached to this world. But the spirit is attached to God. Because the, the spirit always cry, Abba, Father. God bless you. My name is Pastor Luis Santiago coming to you again. I hope you have enjoyed our service. I hope that the Holy Spirit has spoken to your life. I hope that you were encouraged and built up by the power of the Holy Spirit. What I come to you right now, amen, to encourage you, amen. If this ministry has been a blessing to your life, if this ministry has helped you in any way, will you consider to bring an offering to this ministry? Will you consider to sow into this ministry? I'm going to read to you something from the scriptures. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 9, praise the Lord, verse 6. But this I say to you, he who, sow, who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one gives as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're looking for a ministry to plant a seed, to sow a seed, but you are skeptical because you don't know whether it's good ground, whether it's not a good ground. I'm telling you, that the Lord has moved you to watch this video today. So you could help me take the gospel to the nations. I cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. I cannot do it without the help of the blood and the name of Jesus. And I cannot do it also without somebody who helped this ministry to bring the gospel to the nations. So. In the name of Jesus, as you were blessed by this ministry, please bless this ministry. Please bless the people who are preaching the gospel day and night, day and night, without getting, without, without, without any, any, any reserve. And God will bless you tremendously. Thank you. Now, here is some ways that you could help this ministry in Jesus' name. And once again, thank you very much. God bless you.